Welcome in psychology students and welcome to our short lecture on errors and bias and attribution. So hopefully you've read the information leading up to this point. Uh, in terms of attribution, we said that there's a couple different types here. Internal, which would be more focusing on personal attributes like personality and attitudes, where the external attributions would be more situational factors. So now we're really going to build on that information and sort of examine some of the tendencies that we've discovered in people. So we go to errors and bias and attribution. And one of the most classic ones of all time is something called the fundamental attribution error. Basically what this means is that we are making internal attributions for people's behavior even when we see external influences or those external influences could be in play. It's kind of like we're focusing more on the, on the internal things but are ignoring the external influences. For example, let's say that you're at Starbucks having a cup of coffee, coffee and you notice a couple sitting across the room and the man suddenly stands up and points his finger at the woman and starts yelling at her. And he's really upset. So a lot of us may look at that situation and go, wow, he, he's a really mean person. You know, he's sort of a jerk for sort of doing that to that, uh, the poor lady there. But the problem is, is that we don't really know what happened just before that or what led up to that behavior. I mean, for example, he could have just learned that she cheated on him or something. So in other words, it's, it's, sometimes it's very easy for us to focus on the individual sort of aspects and to not sort of consider the situational factors which could have influenced that particular behavior. Psychologists really believe that the fundamental attribution error happens a lot because number one, our culture really focuses on individual accomplishments. The way our country is designed and our culture is to really focus on the individual being unique and so forth. And then secondly, as humans, we often have a hard time believing that we could be influenced by situational factors. We don't want to accept that, that we are easily drawn into those. So we often look for individual explanations. So once again, the point here is that when the fundamental attribution error is in play, we are going with the internal card. We're saying it's something about that person, their personality, for example, and we're ignoring external factors which could be used to sort of explain that. The second error we're going to look at is something called the after-observer effect. This one's a little bit different. So here, we're more likely to make internal attributions to other people's behavior, but when it comes to ourself, we're more likely to make external attributions. In other words, when I'm focusing on other people, I may go with the internal, but if I'm doing the same thing, I may sort of use external factors to explain the same behavior. For example, the reason that you got in a car accident last weekend is you are a bad, bad driver. In other words, this was your fault, you were irresponsible, and that's why you got in a car accident. However, when I got in an accident, well, it, ha it was raining that day, and someone cut me off, it wasn't my fault, I was reacting to the situation, in other words, it's kind of like we're not focusing on ourselves in that particular case. We're sort of blaming it on external factors. In other words, it's almost like there's different rules for the same behavior. So once again, if the actor-observer effect is in play, we're saying that with other people, it's more internal. But with our own behavior, we often go to external attributions. Okay, and then the last one we're going to cover is something called the self-serving bias. And how this is going to differ from the other two is that uh, this is more inwardly focused. So in other words, we're not really looking at other people necessarily. It's more about explaining our own behavior. Self-serving bias are these attributions we have to maximize our credit for success and to minimize blame for failure. In other words, what we're saying here is that when we do something successful and great, we really pump ourselves up and we focus on that and we show that to the world. Look how great I am. However, when we fail, uh, it's quite a different story. We try to hide that or minimize that in some way and not necessarily focus on it. 
For example, if you got an A on an exam in one of your classes, you may tell people that, wow, I'm a great student. I'm intelligent. I'm disciplined. Wow, look at me how great I am. In other words, we're really going to pump ourselves up. But if you failed an exam, it may be more along the lines of, wow, you know, that teacher wasn't as, as fair as I wanted him to be or he or she. Material's really hard. My roommate was bothering me, so I couldn't sort of study. In other words, you're sort of taking the blame off yourself and minimizing it to sort of explain why you failed. The point is, is that when we do things that are great, we really like that. But when we fail, it's a horrible experience, obviously, as a human. So we really think that one of the reasons we do this is to protect our self-esteem. In other words, when we succeed, it makes us feel great, and we love to focus on that. But when we fail, well, that kind of sucks. We don't like that as, as humans, and so therefore we're going to try to steer away from those explanations, if you will. Once again, we think this really helps our self-esteem and allows us to kind of protect ourselves by using this particular strategy. All right, so this will conclude our short lecture on the errors and bias in attribution, and it, you would please go on to the next step in the class.